Welcome to A.T. Stewart and Sons Ministries. I'm your host, A.T. Stewart. I'm glad you've chosen to join us today as we look into the Word of God. So take your Bibles and let's hang out in God's Word for a few moments and see what God would say to us today. Uh, A.T. Stewart, pastor here, and we're working from a schedule of events that I have put together according to my understanding of end times. Uh, It's called the schedule of events to take place before and after the return of Jesus, the Messiah. I think there are certain things that will take place prior to the period of history known as the tribulation, which is a seven-year period of history, uh, immediately preceding the return of Christ. It's divided up into two, three-and-a-half-year segments. The first year being known as first three years being known as the tribulation period. The last three and a half being known as the great tribulation period. Now, I believe there are certain things that will take place prior to the tribulation, and I believe these are found over in Revelation chapter six, as we have the seven seals of God's wrath. And I believe again that these will take place prior to the tribulation. Let me read that for you. And I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, As with a voice of thunder, Come. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow. And a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now I believe this first seal has to do with the Antichrist. Now these seals I do not believe are... uh, Consecutive, but rather I think they are continuous. That is, I believe they overlap. I don't think you have the first seal and then it stops, and then the second seal, then it stops, and the third seal. The first seal, the Antichrist, obviously goes from this point all the way through to the return of Christ. And I think the second seal, which is war, and I believe it's the Russian invasion of Israel, spoken of in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Uh, which will be next week's lesson. Uh, And that obviously continues on into the third seal being opened, which is a worldwide famine. I think that's brought about partly because of this war over the Middle East. And then the fourth seal, which is death of one-fourth of the world's population, which is basically 1.7 billion people in today's uh, terms. Again, I think that is... uh, attributed to war and I think that war mentioned in the second seal will be part of the reason for this death and plague and famine so again I think the seals take place uh, continuously uh, and they overlap uh, so let me just keep keep that in mind as we do our study and again uh, the white horse is a symbol of leadership in the ancient world often a uh, Roman general would ride through a nation he had conquered on a white horse. We see Jesus returning in Revelation 19 on a white horse. And so I think it's telling us that this is a leader, and he who sat on it had a bow. But no arrows are mentioned, only a bow. And I think that's telling us that the primary means in which this leader who I believe to be the future Antichrist, will gain his victories, will be not through uh, military efforts, but through diplomacy. Uh, He will be involved in military efforts later in his, uh, his ruling, but at the beginning he will be diplomatic, and many of his victories will be won because of his uh, genius in diplomatic matters. And it says a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Again, his goal is world conquest. His desire is to conquer. When he comes on the world scene, I think he will appear to have the uh, betterment of mankind as his uh, genuine chief aim and goal. He will offer uh, many promises and solutions to the world's problems. Uh, But I think the scripture lets us know that uh, these are only a ruse. His deep abiding aim and goal is to rule the world, to be the one world ruler. Now to continue the understanding of the Antichrist, we need to go to 
Revelation chapter 13. And this chapter gives us the greatest definition and understanding of the Antichrist uh, that we have in Scripture. And so our study now will turn to Revelation chapter 13. Uh, and we will be looking at uh, his parentage. We will be looking at his purpose. We will be looking at his popularity. Uh, and then we will be uh, looking at his power as well. All right, first of all, his parentage, as we see in Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2. And he stood on the sand of the seashore, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten diadems, and on his heads were blasphemous names. First, I want you to notice, when we look at his parentage, his family likeness to the devil. If ever there has been a man on earth whose father was the devil, it will be the Antichrist. John's description of the Antichrist is strikingly similar to his description of the devil, given in chapter 12, verse 3, which I'll read for you now. And another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. John describes the Antichrist as having ten horns, ten crowns, diadems, seven heads, and filled with blasphemous names. He describes Satan as having seven heads, seven crowns, ten horns, and he is red. And again, the crowns are diadema, the royal crowns. Now, in verse 3 of chapter 17 of Revelation, John even tells us and describes the Antichrist as being red. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. Now Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. Here is Satan's imitation of the Incarnation. Satan conjures up a man who bears all of his characteristics. While Satan is evil, and what he is in his evil person, his vile nature, his diabolical personality, so is this beast, the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be the visible expression of the invisible Satan. That's important to remember this. Satan always wants to imitate God. uh, And just as there is that unholy trinity of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan, so the Antichrist is Satan's imitation of the Incarnation. Now secondly, I believe the Antichrist will come from uh, the Gentile nations the non-Jewish world. That's because he is said to come out of the sea. Uh, And the sea in Revelation refers to uh, the non-Jewish world. And he'll come to power through a ten-nation coalition or a ten-nation confederacy. Now we see this over in Daniel chapter 7 where Daniel sees uh, some visions. And in these visions, we have information that uh, we understand uh, to be uh, the Antichrist. In verse 7 of Daniel 7, we read, After this I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrifying, extremely strong, had large iron teeth, it devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. And while I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and the mouth uttering great boast. Now, I think that little horn that comes up is the Antichrist. And we have a little more understanding given over in beginning in 
verse 19 of this same 7th chapter of Daniel. Thou desire to know the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its claws of bronze, in which devoured, crushed, and trampled down the remainder of its feet. And the meaning of the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and before which three of them fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth uttering great boast, and which was larger in appearance than its associates. I kept looking, and that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast will be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which will be different from all the other kingdoms, and they will devour the whole earth and tread it down and crush it. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings will rise, and therefore we think the Antichrist will come from a ten-nation confederacy. And another will rise after them, and he will be different from the previous ones, and will subdue three kings. And he, I believe he means the Antichrist, will speak out against the Most High, and wear down the saints of the Highest One, and will intend to make alterations in times and in the law, and they will be given into the hand for a time, times, and half a time. Again, time, times, and half a time is three and a half. Time being one, times being two, that's three. And a half a time would be three and a half. But the count, the court will sit for judgment, and his dominion will be taken away, annihilated, and destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty and the dominion and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. And his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. So from this passage in Daniel, we think the scripture teaches that the Antichrist will come from a ten-nation confederacy. And as we will see later, uh, he will defeat three of those kings in order to take his position. So this is his parentage. Now his power. We see also again, we're back now in Revelation uh, chapter 13 as we look at his power. And we want to look at verse 2. The, it says, And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. His power comes from Satan, the dragon. You will remember Jesus tempted Satan with this power in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus said, If you'll bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Here's a man that said yes to Satan in this temptation. The Antichrist bows down and worships Satan, and Satan gives him the kingdoms of the world. The Antichrist enters into a covenant with Satan. Uh, he will worship Satan, and turn Satan will give him power as the world has not seen in any human. Satan masses all of his demons of hell together to work for the advancement of this man's power. All the Antichrist has has come from Satan. His power, his throne, his great authority. Now how can this happen? Uh, I think we have an indication over in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 when Paul talks about uh, the restrainer being removed. Over in Second Thessalonians, Paul is talking about uh, the Antichrist and he gives us some words there in chapter 2 of Second Thessalon- Thessalonians beginning with verse 3. He says that, no one in any way deceive you, for it, that is, the rapture, uh, being taken up to Christ, it has not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. And that man of lawlessness, that son of destruction, is the Antichrist. Verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you about these things? And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he may be revealed? 
For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearing of his coming, that is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of truth so as to be saved. And so God talks about removing the restrainer, and we don't know exactly what that is, uh, but there is some removal of some restraint that will allow this son of destruction to come into power. Uh, and it seems that Satan's power will be increased as well after this restraint has been lifted from the earth. The Antichrist will do miracles, false miracles and signs and wonders. I think he'll probably counterfeit the miracles of Jesus, again seeking to uh, win people's allegiance and approval. Now by this power, Satan's power, the Antichrist will seize control of this ten-nation confederacy. As we saw over in Daniel, seven leaders will gladly give him power, but three, three of the horns, will resist, and so he'll have to crush them uh, in order to take this power. So that's his power. He'll be the most powerful ruler the world, uh, I believe, has ever experienced or seen. Now let's look at his popularity. His popularity is seen in verse 3 of Revelation 13. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? And who is able to wage war with him? It says the whole world was amazed and followed after the beast. What a man he will be in the eyes of the world. He will seem to have the answer to all the world's needs. He will seem to have perfect human intelligence. And he will be a perfect human and a perfect leader. He'll deceive people into thinking he is the answer to all their problems. Uh, they will fall down and worship him. They will acclaim him to be God. And that brings up the question, what will bring all this popularity? I think there are seven things that will make him so popular. First, he will appear to be resurrected from the dead. As we saw in verse 3, he will appear to be killed, to have a fatal head wound. And then he will miraculously be healed and come alive. Uh, probably will be on worldwide satellite TV. Imagine the influence and power uh, that this will have over the world. Second reason for his popularity is he will do miracles, great signs and false wonders. As we saw in our passage in Second Thessalonians earlier, it says he'll do miracles and signs and powerful wonders. As again, I believe he will counterfeit the miracles of Christ. Uh, these are called lying wonders, wonders meant to deceive and make people think that uh, he indeed is God. Thirdly, his popularity, he will make a covenant, a treaty of peace with Israel that will bring him great acclaim. We're all aware of how many presidents have sought to bring peace to the Middle East and have had the summits at Camp David for the purpose of trying to get a peace treaty to establish peace in the Middle East, but none have been able to accomplish that. Well, this Antichrist will accomplish that, and he will make a covenant, as we saw in Daniel 9, 27. He'll make a covenant with the people uh, and bring about a peace treaty. Uh, world tensions are so great in the Middle East and everyone is constantly thinking that war may break out at any time. And the Antichrist will come forth with a peace treaty that will astound the world. It will be a great diplomatic marvel. And with the signing of this peace treaty, the seven years of tribulation will begin. Fourth reason for his popularity, he will allow Israel to rebuild their temple. Uh, right now there are many issues about the Israel rebuilding the temple. The main thing is the location of the temple. If it is 
to be at the Dome of the Rock, which is a great shrine for Islam, uh, one of the third holiest sites for Islam. Uh, then it would have to be removed in order for the temple to be rebuilt. Uh, but we will deal with this in the lesson on the rebuilding of the temple in greater detail. But anyway, it suffices here to say that he will allow the temple to be rebuilt and this will give him great popularity. The fifth thing that will increase his popularity is he will bring years of peace and prosperity. Remember the conditions of the world at this time, the seals uh, had been broken. There's been great devastation and war and famine. And he steps on the world scene and he offers peace and he offers to improve the conditions of the world. Uh, and people will fall to him desiring uh, this peace and the solutions that he will claim to bring. Also, the sixth reason for his great popularity as he will be accompanied by a prophet who will do great miracles even call down fire from heaven again as we see in chapter 13 uh, beginning with verse 11 and I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon this will be the false prophet who will accompany the antichrist Verse 12, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound was healed. And he performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who has the wound of the sword and has come to life. And that will be given to him to give breath to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast might even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. He provides that no one should be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the mark of the beast or the number of his name. And so this this false prophet will come up and accompany, accompany the Antichrist. He will make an image of the Antichrist. He'll even cause his image to speak. And he will institute a one world religious system uh, that will be called on to worship the beast and a one world economic system. The seventh reason the Antichrist will be so popular is that he will proclaim himself to be God in the temple at Jerusalem. As we saw earlier in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, when Paul tells us about the Antichrist. He says over in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. So all will worship him who are not saved by the blood of the Lamb, and they will call him God. So these are seven reasons that explains the supreme popularity that the Antichrist will have. Now we want to look at his purposes. What are the purposes that the Antichrist has? Remember, the Antichrist is Satan's imitation of the incarnation. And when you realize this, then you will realize his purposes. Therefore, first, to defy the God of heaven. In chapter 13 of Revelation, verse 6, we read, And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. That is, those who dwell in heaven. The Antichrist will blaspheme God. He'll blaspheme the temple. He'll blaspheme Christians and everything that's holy. All the vileness and vulgarity of Satan himself comes out of the mouth of the Antichrist. You nor I have ever seen or heard the likes of the blasphemous words that will come forth from the mouth of the Antichrist because one of his main purposes will be to defy the God of heaven. Second, 
He will desire to destroy the saints of God, as we see in verse 7. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. During the last three and a half years of the tribulation, known as the Great Tribulation, he will seek to destroy the saints of God. The death camps of torture, the gas chambers, the fiery furnaces, the firing squads of Nazi Hitler will be nothing compared to what the Antichrist will do as he seeks to torture and kill Christians. He will seek to kill all the Christians he can. The Holocaust will be repeated. And why? Verse 10 tells us, If anyone is destined to captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. All of this is in some way working according to God's sovereign plan to bring about the redemption of his own in human history. The third purpose of the Antichrist, not only to defy the God of heaven and destroy the saints of God, he will seek to dominate the nations of the earth. As we see in verse 7. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. He wants to dominate the globe. He wants all the peoples to yield to his hand in obedience. This is Satan's kingdom, his imitation of the kingdom of God. The Antichrist will seek to enslave men even as Satan seeks to enslave people. And then the fourth purpose will be to delude the masses of mankind. Verse 8 says, And all who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. He seeks to deceive even as Satan deceives, to keep men away from the truth about God. He will seek to cause people to worship him, to deceive them into thinking that he is the Messiah. He is God. Now what should be our response as Christians? Well, we do not know when the Antichrist will come. But we need to make sure that we are growing in our faith and in our trust in God and that our awareness of the biblical teachings about this subject so that when he does arise on the world scene that we will not be caught unaware. This concludes our study uh, on the first seal, which is the Antichrist. Thank you, and I hope you'll continue to listen to the other studies as well.